1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. And for us that have been ordained and are going to be ordained, uh, our, our uh, rewards are going to be great, but God's going to deal with us just a little bit more restrict, uh, stricter than others because we've been called to a holy calling. And I want to read to what Peter says about that. Now notice what it says. I warn and counsel the elders. Well, when you see elders, and then it goes on, the Amplified brings it out among you. The pastors and the spiritual gods of the church. As a fellow elder, and this is what Peter is saying. Yes, I'm an apostle, but I'm also a fellow elder. He's charging us. He's warning us. As an eyewitness called to testify of the sufferings of Christ, as well as the sharer in the glory, the honor, and the splendor that is to be revealed, disclosed, and unfolded. So we as leaders of the church have a great responsibility to do something. Yes, to show up at our meetings. But look what the word of the Lord says. Go to the next verse. 10. Nurture, guard, God, the foal, the flock of God. That is your responsibility. Now let's read that. We talk about the elders, the teachers, the pastors, ministers. We have a great responsibility. This was made so alive to me years ago, years ago. And we order all of our affairs as possibly we can, sometimes we can't, to make sure that we honor God by tending to the church, the body of Christ. Now many of you out there, you've known Susan and me for years, you've known some of our other leaders and we all have ministered to you in various ways. And sometimes, you know, you might get tired. Sometimes I, I have had leaders that were jealous of other leaders. I can't stand that. They, they ain't going to support anybody else, but they expect others to support them when they have something like a program like this. That's why I'm behind you 100%, Michelle. Because we know what you put out. And what others are being put out. So we're here to carry out the work of God and to nurture. Because it's not just a gathering. But we're here with the people of God and others that will come in. It will be our responsibility to know the spiritual aspect of people. Not just the natural part. But to understand how they're hurting. How they're bleeding inside. Things that they don't understand. We as leaders have the wisdom to open this word. I can open this word on any question you want to ask me. And if I don't know it, I'll ask some other leader. But we'll find the answer, because the answer is in the book. Amen. Now, there's some things we have to understand about the church. We are carrying out God's agenda. We are not carrying out some man's agenda. This building is not here because I decided to build a building. God called me and everything you see, God has told me to do. And we've done it by the help of the body of Christ. So let's read on a little bit. Ten, nurture, guard, God, the foe, the flock of God. That is your responsibility. Not by coincidence. I'm pronouncing that wrong. Somebody pronounce it for me. Thank you, Corinth, or constrain, but willingly. I am not coming to this convention. Oh, God, they expect me to come. I'm the preacher. I'm coming willingly because I want to nurture. I want to see people set free to serve the living God. See, the true minister loves God's people. You must understand that. They have the spirit of Christ in them. They put God first. They put the kingdom of God first. Not dishonorably, 
motivated by the adventure or profit belonging to the office, but eagerly and cheerfully. Case closed. Or to open the altar. <laughs> but that principle goes to all of us. We are to watch over one another and love one another. Not to be jealous and envious of one another. The Bible plainly says that. And if we don't love the body of Christ, if we don't love the brother whom we see, we do not love God. And we are in danger because that's the same thing as murder. That's right. Preach it, Bob. I believe it will. Am I preaching truth? Huh? Somebody's laying rocks. Stone me. Go ahead. I'm ready to go. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, stone me if I ain't telling the truth. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know I'm telling the truth. That's what the Bible says. He would have just loved if I hadn't been telling the truth. He would have loved to stone me. But he still loves me. I've settled that a long time ago. Now look what the word of the Lord says. How many love me? Well, we'll see at the end of this message. <laughs> Speak the truth in love. I'm trying that. All right. Let's go to the next one. Now we're in the clouds. Now we're blocked out. I don't think the devil likes this message. Ah! Verse 3. I think I uh, need a little help up there. So I'll just go ahead and read without it being on the board. Not domineering. Now listen to that. Every elder, every leader, not dominating. We don't dominate people. We don't control people. Satan controls people. God leads. God encourages. God empowers. God loves. God sets free. But the devil is dominating Controlling, that's mine. Don't touch it. Anybody in here like that? Oh boy. Hmm? I think they're, they're scared you're going to throw that rock. Better put it over here. Come on, God knows, you know. I love my aunt, bless her heart. She's in heaven. Susan won her to the Lord when she was on the bed dying with cancer. When you come into her house, don't touch nothing. I'm serious. How many have ever, ever found somebody like that? Is anybody in here like that? <laughs> oh, we got one on it. Deborah, thank you for being us. Don't sit there. That's my favorite place for my dog. Come on, I'm speaking truth. I may hit you, but you know, if we, we got to hear the truth. That You'll get to know the truth. The truth will set you free. That's awful to be so intense that... Now, I don't think we are to just be, you know, but you, how many of you understand what I'm talking about? I mean, just this thing is serious at some folks. And they don't need... They need but a, a, a minister is not to be that way. Not domineering, not controlling, not manipulating, talking behind the scene uh, like the politicians do. I wouldn't vote for Frank. I wouldn't vote for Bob. You're not supposed to vote anyway. You're supposed to be led by the Spirit of the living God. And just touch and agree that they're both leaders. Rick is a leader. We're not to have and be, well, I'm for him, I'm, I'm for them, I'm for... That's hogwash! 
Everybody say hogwash. Some of you don't even know what hogwash is, and you tug it. That's hogwash. I've been off the farm so long, I think I forgot. But anyway, you take your, you wash your, the dishes and with lye soap and everything, and you pour it in this pan with the garbage and all of the leftover bones and all, and you take it out and slop the hogs. You slop the hogs with it. And then you go out and kill the hog and eat the hog. <laughs> That's what gives it that yum yum taste. But this is serious business that even with our children, uh, as a father to nurture their children, to, to nurture their wife, to love their wife as Christ loved the church. Oh, listen to this. Christ loves the church, therefore every leader is to love the church. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. How many kids, how many parents in here, your kids have all, the, your kids have always done everything you wanted them to do? Raise your hands. Well, God's kids don't do everything I want them to do either, but I still love them. I want you to say, you need to understand how our pastors are, how our leaders are. We still love you. We know that many times you're just, you know, you give excuses and lie. And we know you lying. And we just pray, oh God. I've read in the scriptures where no liar will enter the kingdom of heaven. Woo, my goodness. Now, she's not leaving because I said, talking about lying now. Are, are you, Rachel? <laughs> I know it. All right. She's got something she's got to take care of. Now, look. Not domineering as arrogant as dictators or overbearing persons. Overbearing persons, but being example, patterns, and models of Christian living to the flock, the congregation. Now, when you look at the leaders in this church, that's the exact, they are to be examples to you. We are to be examples to you. You girls, look how Susan dresses. Everything's covered but her head. <laughs> now, Bob, don't go that way. Oh, I'd love to go that way. Can I go that way? <laughs> See, our minds, thank you, our, our minds are so, I hate to say it worldly sometimes, but do you dress according to the world? I want you to look at uh, Willie uh, back there. He's throwing rocks at me. Do it again. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> he says, preach it, preach it. That's what that is. <laughs> look at me all up here. I'm bare chest. My pants are up to my knees. Man, what a good looking preacher that is. Did you see his legs? Man. He's hairy legs, all right. No wonder Susan loves that man. <laughs> Tell it like it is, Bob, I believe it will. <clears throat> but you know, there's so much we just have to, you know, that, that, that's the right thing to address at the right time. And, and sometimes we just have to pray. And we, and we do here. We've seen people, whole, their whole uh, wardrobe has changed just because we pray for them. You know what I mean? And they come out in, in, from the world. They don't know this is how you dress. But then they find out that when they read the Bible, do everything in moderation. Let the inner man shine forth. God looks at the inner man. Now, girls, we do like a little paint on the old barn. We're not kicking that. We're not saying that you to roll up your hair to donut. <laughs> But 
But you see, the big job that we have is to nurture people, not condemn people, but try to get them to grow up in Christ. How many in here have probably said in your life, if I could get that boy to grow up, if I could get that young lady to grow up, I would be the happiest person in the world. And sometimes I say that to the Lord. Father, if we could just get sister so-and-so to grow up, if we could get brother so-and-so to grow up, I think I'd be the happiest person in the world. Did you know there's people in this church I have to pray for every day? What are you, look, what are you looking at Floyd for? I'm just looking over that way. You, you would have totally disintegrated if I hadn't prayed for you. And I thank you all for praying for me. That's what you're supposed to do. I'd probably be disintegrated too. I, I, I told uh, somebody this week that the, how the enemy has come against me as the, as the pastor of this church because of this, this conference that we're going to have. I know the enemy wants to attack. He's attacked in me. I know the, 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 the strategy of the enemy. When I'm under attack, this church is under attack, and, and, and he's going to do everything to try to break this thing up. But you know what? God's passing the ball to you. And then you pass it to somebody else. And the whole object is that we come together as a team. And one person is just as important as the other person. It it, it ain't one of us. None of us is going to be it on the stick. No, Jesus is it on the stick. We're the body of Christ. He's everything. You see, and it's not about me and it's not about you. It's about the souls of men that have died. Without Christ, they die and go to a burning hell and never escape. Never, there is no exit, no exit at the doors in, 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 in hell. No exit. Once you're there, that's it, brother. That's it, sister. You're going to fry throughout eternity, throughout eternity. And that's not God's will. God says, it's my will that no man perish. Oh, that's why I've given my son. I love him so much, but I love you more. Or as much as I love my son. And I give him to die on that cross that you might live with me in heaven forever and ever. That's the will of God. That we live and be happy and be blessed. So we... Leaders have a great responsibility, and sometimes if you're not careful, you might think, well, this is just old hat coming to church. No, it's God's plan that we meet together and nurture one another and look out for one another and pray one for another and help each other to get delivered from the world of flesh and the devil. And then go out from there, and that's what partly this conference is. We're reaching out into the world And trying to draw people in for this body to minister to. Right now, this church, you and me, all of us together as a team, as a body of believers, are preaching to the world. And Jesus said this gospel will be preached into all the world and then the end will come. And that's what we're doing. We are carrying out God's own uh, agenda by preaching the gospel throughout the world through the internet. We have, I don't know how many uh, faith talks we have on there, 300 maybe now. I mean, you can take just the faith talk, the messages, everything on the faith talk, get saved, get grow and mature and learn so much about God on that one computer, that internet, that website that we have. All our messages, all of our leaders are on there. So part of your job is to introduce people out in the world about our internet, about what we preach in this church. Because they ain't going to hear, in some churches, what we preach here. How many of you know that? Mm -hmm. I've been around, I know. Now, praise God, we have the help, the help of the Holy Spirit. And he's our helper. Notice this. And model of Christians living to the flock, the congregation. 
Now that's directly, this, this, this chapter is really to the leaders. I want you to see that. All right, let's move on a little bit. Now, look at the next verse. Verse 4, and then when the chief shepherd is revealed, who is that? Christ. You will win the conqueror crown of glory. Rick, that's for you. You're going to look good in that crown of glory. Whatever it is. That's for me. That's for Frank. For Michelle. For our deacons. For Rick and for Doris and for um, Rose. For all of our leaders. And then when the chief shepherd is revealed at the resurrection, you will win the conqueror's crown of glory. Go to the next verse. Now he's talking to the leaders of the church. Now, boy, that's a little. <laughs> now, I got a few words I want to say to the young folk. Likewise, you who are younger and lesser rank, so you have rank in the, in, in the church. Some folks don't like that. Be subject to the elders, the ministers, the spiritual gods, and the church, giving them due respect and yielding to their counsel. Wow. Clothe, apron yourselves, all of you, with humility. We all are to have humility one to another. Giving respect to one another. Young, old, that's something that we all have to realize. As the scarp, carp of a servant. Yes, we are sons of God by what God has done, but we choose to be servants of God. That is covering so that its covering cannot possibly strip from you with freedom and from pride and arrogance. Wow. So if we don't walk in humility, notice this, the covering that we have could possibly be stripped from us towards one another. So we are to be clothed with humility towards one another. Can I just tell you what I think? No, don't, please, don't do that. <laughs> How many of you know everybody's got an opinion? Reminds me of this guy that had this boat. And he had, he just, he's just going to fix it up just like he wants, and his neighbor comes over. I wouldn't do that. You need to tear that out and do this. He said, the guy said, oh, okay. So he starts doing what his neighbor says, and he's working on his boat and fixing it up. This other neighbor comes over. I wouldn't do that. Here's what I'd do. Oh, well, he tears that down. He starts doing what the other neighbor says. So the other neighbor comes over, but he's working on another boat. And the other neighbor comes up and said, man, I wouldn't. He said, wait a minute. You see that boat over there? You put that idea on that boat. I'm building this for myself. You didn't get it, did you? I tried. Everybody's got an opinion. But if I was the pastor, this was what I'd do. Well, you ain't the pastor. Some of you are looking at me like, It's something to flow with the flow. Amen. There's time, yes, we all have our opinions. I don't, I'm not kicking that. But there's times to flow with the leadership. I didn't hear one amen out there. Amen. It's time to flow with the leadership. Amen. Well, I'm not going to get that. If you were in charge, you'd expect us to flow with you. 
Come on, church, don't shout me down. You know you would. You see, there's still some of that old garbage left in your life. That's one thing that I did when I was, wasn't a pastor. I supported him. I supported the leadership. Oh, I had my ideas, and I did a lot of them away from, from them, but I supported their effort and what they were doing. I have some people that come in here and say, you know, Bob, I'm with you. Next week. They gone. How many's ever had that happen in their life? Huh? They gone. Well, what do you do? Well, you cuss them out. That's what you do. Huh? No, you overcome evil with good. First Peter chapter three, verse eight and nine. You want to put it down? All right, look, look, I gotta read that. I'll read it from the Bible. I can't even see what verse that is. <coughs> five, five. Okay. <coughs> I've already read that part of it. All right. All right. For God sets himself against the what? The proud. Can you all see that up there? Yeah, you can be proud. You can say, I'm not going to do that. You can be proud. Go ahead. And God's against you. Vengeance is mine, say of the Lord. I don't have to worry about it. I say, oh God, please. I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. Oh God. Look what the word of the Lord says. That's not the word of man. That's the word of God. Look at it now. Look at it. Look at it. Let it burn in the heart. For God sets himself against the proud, the insolent, the overbearing, the disdainful, the presumptuous, the boastful, and he opposes, frustrates, and defeats them. I've had people say, it just seems like God is against me. Well, let's check the record. Let's see. Are you, are you a, a long ranger? Do you just do everything you want to do and you can't flow with the, the flow of the body of Christ? Well, I'm not going to flow. Brother, you got pride and you got pride. God's against you. Anybody? Look? Hey, am I preaching the word? Yes. Say, am I preaching the word? Yes. Woo! Because I love you. Amen. And we don't know sometimes why we have this opposition in the spiritual arena. And we're so full of pride and arrogant and I've been there. That's why I can preach it. That's why I repented and came under. And I submit to people that's under me. How many times I my wife is under my covering, I submit to her. And many things, because wisdom speaks. And if you're in the spirit, you can hear wisdom. If it comes from a jackass. How many of you know jackasses can talk? Yes. I'm not going to go no further with that, I tell you. <laughs> Believe me, I could milk that. <laughs> Look at that. He opposes. Who opposes? God opposes. And defeats them. But gives grace, grace, favor to the humble. Everybody say, I'm humble. All right, now you can receive a lot of grace. Amen. I, the Word of God has hit something so important. I was thinking about what Mike was talking about one time, about talking about being humble. They voted on the most humble man in the church, and they gave him a, a, a nice big round thing here. He was the humblest man in the church. And, and the next Sunday he came to church and he wore it. And the preachers took it away from him. The, the elders took it away from him. Because he dare wear that. Are you still wearing your badge? Are you humble? When somebody blesses you out, what do you do? 
preach it, Bob. <laughs> I believe I will. I've had them cuss me out in church. Tell me to go to hell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I said, no, no, I'm not going to hell. See, Jesus took care of that for me. <laughs> you, you understand that? No, I'm going to heaven. Amen. See, I know where I'm going. I know who I belong to. As he is in the world, so am I. Say, if we're not careful, we just come to church and it's just, oh, oh, let's get out of this place quick. Oh, that's right. They're going to eat afterwards. I'll go, yeah. No, this is the most serious hour that you could spend in today. Amen. Now, you know, a lot of times I preach edifying messages, but I'm preaching this because I want to see you get blessed. Because we as a group of people have a great responsibility to flow together and let each joint be knitted to the other joint, even the young people. We are to submit to those that have authority over us. Now, if they tell us to do something wrong, God tells us we don't have to do that. But if we're doing the work of God, we're to flow with the leadership. And everybody said? Amen. Oh, that was mighty weak, mighty weak, mighty weak. All right, listen to this now. Therefore, well, what's the solution for you? What's the solution to break God from resisting you? Verse 6. Therefore, church, humble yourself, demote, lower yourself in your own estimation. Oh, my goodness. That's good. Man, that's the word of God. Well... I have people sometimes come in here and say, you know, Bob, you want me to do anything. I was a deacon in the, in the last Baptist church. I mean, the first Baptist church. Uh, anything you want me to do, uh, just let me know. I said, well, yeah, I got, we got some grass that needs to be cut. And, the, the, you know, check with Rick and Missy. and They'll give you a job cleaning the building. And uh, Man, they left fast. <laughs> See, they want to be in charge. They want to tell everybody what to do, but they don't want to do it themselves. Willie, you still love me? Willie, you still love me, son? I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Honey, you still love me, baby? Susan, you still love me, baby? Susan, you still love me, honey? Hey, wisdom. I know she does. She, I don't have to ask her. She's proven it for 62 years to live with me for 62 years and she still looks like a movie star. Inside and out. All right, listen to this. This is the solution. Therefore, humble yourself, demote, lower yourself in your own estimation under the mighty hand of God, and in due time, he may exalt you. You never exalt yourself. You always humble yourself, and God will exalt you. Are you listening? Even in your own, where you work out there, you humble yourself. And God will exalt you. I tell you one thing. If God don't exalt me, I don't want to be exalted. I don't want to be a leader. Are you listening? Because the punishment will be double on us leaders. Teachers. Read that. That's in James. So I just rather be one of the boys. Taking orders. Because, see, when you're a leader, you've got all of these different powers of darkness in the atmosphere. They know if the shepherd is struck, tell me, the flock will be scattered. Are you listening? That's where we pray for our leaders. You've got to have leadership. That's why we're all confused today. Who are we going to vote for? I mean, those people up there arguing, fighting with one another. How many watches the news on the, our, uh, our presidency uh, thing, you know? One day I think I vote for him. The next day, no, I think I vote for him. And I don't think I vote for either one of them. It's like two Hitlers. 
Which Hitler should I choose? <laughs> it's true. But I'll tell you what. I am commanded to pray for leadership. And I thank God that in America we have a chance to vote. And I thank God for that. And I usually vote. But if there's two Hitlers running, which Hitler am I going to choose? I say, Lord, <laughs> you know which one. <laughs> All right, church. Now, look what it says. Now, here's something for us leadership. I know the strain that's on you. The Lord is saying through Peter. And this is verse 7. Verse 7. So, here's what you do. Rick, Bob, Frank, Willie, Charles, all the ministers, cast the hold of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him. For he cares for you affectionately and cares about your watchfully watches over you watchfully isn't that precious Amen. so remember that leaders remember that he cares for us and he tells us what to do sometimes it's like that ball I pass the ball to you and somebody pass it back <laughs> the Lord ain't that way when you cast your cares upon him he ain't gonna pa pass them back to you look at the next verse Be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind. Be vigilant, be cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking some leader to seize upon and devour. That's a word for the leadership. But... Also, for the saints, also. That's why I told you that the enemy was coming against me this week, but I know how to handle it. I pray and pray and pray and pray. Sometimes you see me running around on my little golf cart. I'm praying, praising God, rebuking. Because if the enemy does move in this conference, he'll move from some, through some human being. I want to say that again. If or when the enemy moves, he's already picked out people that he knows he can move through. And he'll move through those people to quench the spirit, to quench this conference. Whatever he has to do, if God hasn't done that work in you, you'll be used by the enemy to stop the conference. You think I'm kidding? I'm preaching truth. Now some of you don't understand that because you haven't walked in the spirit, but some of you understand that. Paul said, Satan has hindered me from coming to you. Yes, he can hinder the man of God. That's why it's important to let the cross operate in your life. And when the Spirit of the Lord is about to move, those that have uh, allowed the Holy Spirit to work in them will be used by God to further His work. But for those that have not allowed the Holy Spirit to work in them and work all that ugliness out, they'll be the one that Satan will use to quench the Holy Spirit. Some of you didn't know that, did you? But you know it now. You might not understand it, but that's the way it works. I've seen it over the years. It is so sad. So, humble yourself and be an instrument in God's hands. Now, look at this, it says there. What do we do, men, women? What do we do? Verse 9. Withstand him. Be firm in faith against his onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable and determined knowing that the same identical sufferings 
are appointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christians throughout the world. Yes, it comes against the leadership, but then it eventually comes against the whole body. And we have to learn, because let me tell you something, if you haven't learned the movement of the Spirit from the movement of your flesh, you're going to always follow the flesh. The flesh always takes the easy route. Believe it will. And I know that from experience. I remember one time, it might have been two times. Susan, would you call the, 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 the base, that's where I worked, and, <coughs> and tell them I, I, I got a sore throat? How many of you know that's dishonest? I, I didn't want to go to work. <coughs> so she calls, obeys her husband. And the minute she calls, my flow clears up. Well, this is great. How many of you know that's deception? Yes. How many's ever done that? <laughs> One. One. Deborah, you're the only honest person in this church. God bless you, honey. But she knows the Lord's taking care of it. You know you've done that. Many of you have done that. I had to tell uh, Rick and Missy that I couldn't come to Friday night movie and, and dinner back there. Because I didn't want to. So I told them that, you know, I got to go to my, my daughter's uh, fixed a big party for us. And we got to go over there. And we stayed home and watched TV. I'm just kidding. It was an honest, you throw the rock, baby. <laughs> Everybody get a rock and let me have it. But I'm using that as an example. Does anybody identify with that? Come on, love me just a little bit. Aren't you glad that Jesus forgives us when we do sin? Aren't you glad for First John 1, 9? Oh, God. But see, God wants us to learn and quit that hypocrisy and telling lies and tell it like it is. But they might think, I'm not spiritual if I tell it like it is. So what? We already know if you're spiritual or not. <laughs> All right, let's read on. Wow. Withstand him. Be firm in faith. Everybody say, be firm in faith. Against the onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, and in determined, knowing that the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christians throughout the whole world. So all of us have experienced it. The whole nine yards, we all have experienced the enemy coming against. And there's times we fail and the times we press on. But God knew there'd be times we would fail, and that's why he provided 1 John 1, 9 in there. Well, I didn't sin. Well, you're deceived, the Bible says. But if you see that you did, and you admit it, and you confess it, God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And you can go on. But see, your pride will... No, no, that's not the reason. No. Oh, no. All right, look at this. Let's finish this. You don't want to miss none of this. This is powerful. Mm -mm -mm. All right, now look at verse 10, and we're going to quit. And after you have suffered a little while, because we suffer when the enemy comes against us, the God of all grace, 
who imparts all blessings and favors, who has called you to his own eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will humble, will, I'm sorry, will himself complete and make you what you are to be, establish and ground you securely and strengthen and settle you. So even when we fail, if we humble ourselves, God will do the work in us and make us men and women of integrity, men and women of honest, men and women that stand for truth and love people, love one another. He will do the work in us and we can stand strong. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that your word has exposed us all in some degree. And that's what we want. But I thank you, Lord, that we can repent to you and a knowledge. We will not lie. We will tell the truth to you and say thank you, Father, for cleansing us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, pray for the leaders in this conference and pray for everybody that will come. Many of you will be here. Many other people will come. Bring somebody to this conference and let's trust God's spirit to move in a mighty way in our midst as we yield to him. God bless you. If you need to come for prayer, come up. We'll be glad to